When we were put in slavery, we were beat into submission and the person that we looked up to was the slave master. So what you have to understand, a lot of black people in America look at themselves through the eyes of the slave master. We feel the same way that they feel about us. We want the same thing. There have always been laws that would pit African-American people against other African-American people. During slavery, they had a law called the Meritorious Manumission Law where African people would get rewarded for turning in another African slave or turning in a person who wanted to create some type of um, rebellion or, or runaway slave. So there were all types of incentives to give African American people for turning on each other. I mean, all of our major organizations are supported by people who classify themselves as white. So it becomes difficult to bite the hand that feeds you. Give the illusion of inclusion. And under the illusion of inclusion, we're actually going to take them back to Jim Crow. That's what they're doing. They're taking us back as they give us the propaganda of going forward, and they do this through the hoop. Black bourgeoisie. Every city got a black bourgeoisie. This is how white supremacy operates. A numerical minority cannot control a numerical majority without participation from the majority. It's impossible. A lot of black secret societies are secret to the black community because you're not secret to the dominant society because if you're a black secret society or a black organization, either you're going to be funded by the dominant society or you're going to be infiltrated by the dominant society. So a lot of these black organizations are secret to black people. If you look at most uber rich black people, I'm not talking about the rappers because, I mean, that's not moving the financial scope. But I'm talking about the black people that really are making money, especially the men. You don't see anything cultural about them. You usually don't see no beard. You usually don't see no long hair. They're not threatening at all. You never see them stand for anything. And a few of them may stand when all of the black people are standing so they won't look bad. Like they'll jump on a Trayvon bandwagon, bandwagon and throw a hoodie on and, you know, take a pose for the camera, they're not really gonna move the pose. And that's what I keep telling people. You know, a lot of black people who are doing very well for themselves, who benefited off the system being the way that it is, why would they change? A lot of the black secret societies, they were started because many of the people were the mulatto offspring of slave masters. As a matter of fact, in South Carolina, there was a group called the Brown Fellowship Society, and they were basically freed Africans who were the offspring of the slave masters, and they didn't want to identify themselves with black, and they couldn't be accepted by the dominant society, so they called themselves brown. They settled on that. And there was a major uprising that was going to happen in South Carolina, the Denmark Vesey Resurrection. And there were members of this organization called the Brown Fellowship Society that told on the Denmark VC rebellion leaders. Money is an anesthetic. It kind of dulled the pain a little bit. You know, you, ah, well, maybe I can make it. Well, it ain't so bad. You know? Well, there's some good ones out there. I mean, you know, we come up with a whole new scenario of rap to talk about once we get really, really big, big successful. Flat and impoverished. It is the last place on earth to look for the extraordinary or for the shadow of greatness. For generations, black people have been economically disenfranchised by different laws, different types of public policies. So because there is economic deprivation, it's very easy to find black people who need the money and who are willing to throw other black people under the bus for money. So this is why it's important for African-American people or us in general to have rules and integrity when we're trying to get our paper, because like they say, man, all money is not good money. There's a, tons of millionaire rap artists alone. 20 years ago, there was no record deals. There was no shows for just anybody. Now everybody's touching some money. So why, what rules? The rules is go get money. So they, all the rules went out the way. All the rules were forgotten. You know what I'm saying? And, and what happens is, Dudes get lost because they never had to follow no rules. They never looked up to anybody that was a stand-up person. So it's all about paper, paper, paper. There is no rules. So what happens is they wind up one day, I don't, I got a little money and I don't know why I don't have no real respect. 
because they forgot to look at the examples before them. What did a promotion mean for black folks? Let's just take a look at what promotions meant. Okay, if you're promoted as a woman, uh, the likelihood is you are either going to be breeder, right? You're going to end up having getting bred or passed around as a favor, right? So there's fear around, inherent fear around being promoted. If you're a man, you get promoted into what? An overseer? So then you get promoted into being my oppressor. So I'm not all that interested in you getting promoted. Or maybe, you know, you get, you get promoted into being a stud, right? You get promoted into, here's another one, being a preacher. Interesting, all the things that happen around that. At one time, the churches used to be a place that was some power for us and where we could go and have certain discussions or mobilize and things. Well, faith-based money that Bush came up with eliminated that because once the churches applied for and got that money, they couldn't say nothing else about racism no more. That In that, they bought them out. There was another organization called the Blue Vein Society down in New Orleans, and they were called the Blue Vein Society because they were mulatto um, black people who would only let other light-skinned black people in the organization. The rule was you had to be light enough so they could see your blue veins. That's why they call themselves the Blue Vein Society. Even now, and until recently, a lot of so-called black organizations, they've had this brown paper bag test. You had to be a certain skin tone in order to be accepted. So there are a lot of these black secret societies that take on a lot of the negative viewpoints of the dominant society or that the dominant society have of other black folk. We know that the first full-time FBI agent in American history, black agent, was actually hired to infiltrate the Marcus Garvey movement, working under the supervision of J. Edgar Hoover to destabilize it. African American people are the only people who are rewarded for turning on other African American people. You don't see that with other people in the dominant society. You don't see Latino people being rewarded for turning on other Latino people. You don't see Asian people being rewarded for turning on other Asian people. But if there are African American people who are willing to talk badly or negatively about other African American people or throw other African American people under the bus, they get book deals, they get TV shows, they get radio show deals. So there are all types of rewards and incentives for African Americans to throw other African Americans under the bus. And this comes directly from slavery. You know, at one time, the black man had to grin and smile all the time. You, everything, it didn't matter what. You had to keep grinning, keep smiling. That was to show all of the white people that you were not hostile and you was a happy Negro. You weren't mad about nothing. No matter how I've been treated, I'm still happy. In the history of America, there have always been compromising black people who would do things to compromise the rest of the community. And there have been several names historically for black people who do things like this. The sellout, Uncle Tom, Mammy, Coon. I mean, all types of names utilized for people who will compromise the rest of the black community. You can't be born a coon. No, you have to take, you have to practice being a coon. Practice grinning, practice bucking your eyes. Yeah, it takes, it's hard work to be a coon. Mm -hmm. Why, that man is just wasting money. From coon to tycoon. The United States Army Office of Intelligence hired a black man by the name of R.R. Moton. This is going to blow people's minds. Booker T. Washington's vice principal at Tuskegee Institute was a paid undercover intelligence officer for the United States Army whose job was to spy on Booker T because they were concerned that he was using Tuskegee and they were correct in their suspicions as a hideout for black revolutionaries away from the Klan and away from the government. We know that the man who infiltrated Malcolm and served as one of his security men, Gene Roberts, was an agent and then after he brought Malcolm down he goes and brings the Panthers down. So they used them again after, because nobody knew who he was yet. So they was able to use them again, and then he brought down the Panthers. There is one thing that we have to be dealing with, and that is the issue of a total emancipation and liberation of our people. And if that's not the deal, then you're not part of the solution. And so we have to look at this very carefully, and we have to let folk know, whatever they may be, with all those minorities, if we all came together, we would understand we are the majority. But as long as we are divided, we will be conquered. And as long as they can play one group against another group, whatever it may be, whether it is the internal Willie Lynch syndrome or whether it is a cultural Willie Lynch syndrome, we will always be controlled, contained, and dominated by the, by the true minority.